Money Prince. Chapter 73. Stub and Flask kill a right whale and then have a talk over him. <laughs> it must be borne in mind that all this time we have a sperm whale's prodigious head hanging to the Pequod's side, but we must let it continue hanging there a while till we can get a chance to attend to it. But the present other matters press. The best we can do now for the head is to pray heaven the tackles may hold. But now the past night and forenoon, the Pequod had gradually drifted into a sea which, by its occasional patches of yellow brit, gave unusual tokens of the vicinity of right whales, a species of the leviathan that but few supposed to be at this particular time lurking anywhere near. But though all hands commonly disdained the capture of those inferior creatures, and though the Pequod was not commissioned to cruise for them at all, and though she had passed numbers of them near the Crozets, without lowering a boat, yet now that a sperm whale had been brought alongside and beheaded to the surprise of all the, the announcement was made that a right whale should be captured that day if opportunity offered nor was this long wanting till s tall spouts were seen to leeward and two boats stubs and flasks were detached in pursuit pulling further and further away they at last became almost invisible to the men at the masthead to the men at the masthead but suddenly in the distance they saw a great heap of the tumultuous white water and soon after and soon after news came aloft that one or both the boats must be fast an interval passed and the boats were in plain sight in the act of being dragged right towards the ship by the towing whale so close did the monster come to the hull that at first it seemed as if he meant it as if he meant it malice but suddenly going down in the the maelstrom within three rods of the planks he wholly disappeared from view as if diving under the keel cut cut was the cry from the ship to the boats which for one instant seemed on the point of being brought with a deadly dash against the vessel's side but having plenty of line yet in the tubs and the whale not sounding very rapidly they paid out abundance of rope and at the, the same time pulled with all their might so as to get ahead of the ship for a few minutes the struggle was intensely critical but while they still slacked out the tightened line in one direction and still plied their oars in another the contending strain threatened to take them under but it was only a few feet advance they sought to gain, and they, and they stuck to it till they did gain it, when instantly a swift tremor was felt running like lightning along the keel, as a strained line, scraping beneath the ship, suddenly rose to view under her bows, snapping and quivering, and so flinging off its drippings, that the drops fell like bits of broken glass on the water, while the whale beyond also rose to sight, and once more the boats were free to fly. But the fagged whale abated his speed, and blindly altering his course, went round the stern of the ship, towing the two boats after him, so that they performed a complete circuit. Meantime, they hauled more and more upon their lines, till, close flanking him on both sides, St Stubb answered Flask with lance for lance, and thus round and round the Pequod the battle went, while the multitude of sharks that had before swum round the sperm whale's body rushed to the fresh blood that was spilled, thirstily drinking at every new gash as the eager Israelites did in the new bursting fountains that poured from the smitten rock. At last his spout grew thick, and with a frightful roll and vomit he turned upon his back a corpse. While the two headsmen were engaged in making fast cords to his flukes, and in other ways getting the mass in readiness for towing, some conversation ensued between them. "'I wonder what the old man wants with this lump of foul lard,' said Stubb, not without some disgust at the thought of having to juice do of having to do with so ignoble a leviathan. Wants with what? said Flask, coiling some spare line in the boat's bow. Did you, did you never hear that the ship which but once has a sperm whale's head hoisted on her starboard side, and at the same time a right whale's on the larboard? Did you never hear, Stubb, that that ship can never afterwards capsize? Why not? I don't know, but I heard the gambage ghost of a Fidella saying so, and he seems to know all about ship's charms but I sometimes think he'll charm the ship to no good at last. I don't half like that chap, Stubb. Did you ever notice how that tusk of his is sort of carved into a snake's head, Stubb? Sink him. I never look, him, look at him at all. And if I ever get a chance of a dark night, and he standing hard by the bulwarks and no one by, look down there, Flask, pointing to the sea with a peculiar motion in both hands. I will I. Flask, I take that Fidella. I take that Fidella to be the devil in disguise. Do you believe that cock and bull story about his having been stowed away on board ship? He's the devil, I say. The reason why you don't see his tail is because he tucks it up out of sight. He carries it coiled away in his pocket, I guess. Blast him. Now that I think of it, he's always wanting oakum to stuff into the toes of his boots. 
He sleeps in his boots, don't he? He hasn't got any hammock, but I've seen him lay nights of a coil in the rigging. No doubt, and it's because of his cursed tail he coils it down, do you see, in the eye of the rigging. What's the old man have so much to do with him for? Striking up a swap or a bargain, I suppose. Bargain? About what? Why, don't you see? The old man is hard bent after that white whale, and the devil there is trying to come round him and get him to swap away his silver watch or his soul or something of that sort, and then he'll surrender Moby Dick. Pooh! Stub, you're skylarking. How could Fidella do that? I don't know, Flask, but the devil is a curious chap and a wicked one, I tell you. Why, they say is how he went a-sauntering into the old flagship once, switching his tail about devilish easy and gentlemanlike, and inquiring if the old governor was at home. Well, he was at home and asked the devil what he wanted. The devil, switching his hoofs, up and says, I want John. What for? says the old governor. What business is that of yours? says the devil, getting mad. I want to use him. Take him, says the governor. And by the Lord, Flask, if the devil didn't give John the Asiatic cholera before he got through with him, I'll eat this whale in one mouthful and look sharp. Ain't you all ready there? Well, then, pull ahead and let's get the whale alongside. I think I remember some such story as you are telling, said Flask, when at last the two boats were slowly advancing with their burden towards the ship, but I can't remember where. Three Spaniards, adventurers, of those three bloody-minded soldados. Did you read it there? I guess you did. No, never saw such a book, heard of it, though. But now, tell me, Stubb, do you suppose that that devil you were speaking of just now was the same you say is now on board the Pequod? Am I the same man that helped kill this whale? Doesn't the devil live forever? Who ever heard that the devil was dead? Did you ever see any parson a wearing? Did you ever see any parson a wearing mourning for the devil? And if the devil has a latch key to get into the admiral's cabin, don't you suppose he can crawl into a porthole? Tell me that, Mister Flask. How old do you suppose Fidella is, Stub? Do you see that main mast there, pointing to the ship? Well, that's the figure one. Now take all the hoops in the Pequod's hold and string them along in a row with that mast for oughts. Do you see? Well, that wouldn't begin to be Fidella's age. Nor all the coopers in creation couldn't show hoops enough to make oughts enough. But see here, Stub, I thought you a little boasted just now that you meant to give Fidella a sea toss, if you got a good chance. Now, if he's so old as all those hoops of yours come to, and if he's going to live forever, what good will it do to pitch him overboard? Tell me that. We'll stop today, my friends. Have a good day.